Greetings once again, heroes and villains out there. Diz Diz Din back again with My Hero Academia. In the previous chapter, Deku and Shigaraki's memory continue to blend and fuse as weird amalgam, thanks to the increasing merging of sorts of one for all and all for one. As Deku continues to try and transfer the other users of one for all into Shigaraki, Tomura actively starts trying to reject them, but one will always seemingly manage to break through, as this time it was N, which, while it's great that the plan continues to work, Smokescreen was Deku, one of Deku's greatest assets going forward. Meanwhile, Mei Hatsume and La Brava have teamed up of sorts in order to make sure that Deku and Shigaraki's fight is broadcast to the entirety of the world as the people wait with bated breath to see if the hero will win out. We also see that Yue has finally been safely set down into the ocean with Gentle continuing to help out as Somentos helps get everybody off the once floating but now floating in a different sense island. Meanwhile, at one of the evacuation centers, Eerie sees what's been going on and runs off seemingly to try and help. I mean, we've been waiting a long time to see if Aerie is able to use her abilities to the utmost, and because of what was done with Lumillion, she seems to have a pretty good handle on it. But how much of a situation is she gonna run upon that will need her abilities? And to what degree will she be able to help Deku? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, My Hero Academia number 416, wrench it open, Izuku Midoriya. Is it like that when he was saying you twist fate? Is that what it's kind of referencing? We see Deku, still thankfully cloaked in black whip, because, you know, I said Smokescreen was one of his greatest assets. It's black whip, honestly. It's what's holding him together. But but Shigaraki has encased himself in this just amalgous mass of fingers. Gee, I really do wonder how the anime is going to portray a lot of this stuff. Because <laughs> Horikoshi going hard with the Akira stuff. And we see, I guess... It looks like Camera's watching Azuku in the midst of battle. Yeah, Eerie sees this and tries to run off, but Ectoplasm blocks her way, saying, Not so fast. Eerie tells him, But I gotta help Deku. Ectoplasm tries to explain to her, Hundreds of kilometers lie between him and us. Eerie says, I can ride back in the big box. The same way we got here. Ectoplasm explains the battles against Dobby, Machia, and All for One were far more destructive than anticipated, damaging even our evacuation system. A return trip is not possible. Here he tries to get out, but but, but Ectoplasm continues saying, Besides, your rewind energy is not yet replenished. Oh, okay. Right from Miria, Eerie continues to well up with tears, and Ectoplasm pauses, then saying, Rushing to him now would be fruitless. You know this much after meeting with Eraser. Ah, uh, so she tried to use his, her abilities on him, but she wasn't able to actually do anything. I guess we see after the raid on the Paranormal Liberation Front, Eerie tried to heal him, but doesn't look like she was able to actually do anything. As Eraser, you know, tried to comfort Eerie, saying, Me? I got run over by a dump truck. But don't worry, I'm on the mat. As Eerie continues to watch Deku's battle on the screen, Ectoplasm tells her, I understand painfully well how you must feel, but all we can do for now is to keep the faith. Eerie thinks back to Deku, I guess before everything started to transpire. As he was leaving, she held his hand and he gave her a smile, juxtaposed with the <laughs> brutal beat up way he's looking now, with Deku telling her, You've got a dream of your own, Eerie? That makes me want to try extra hard myself. But as Eerie wipes away her tears and holds onto her horn, a hand comes out to grasp hers, and a voice calls out, You know how Midori is always about to burst out crying? It's Koda. As Eerie calls out to him, Koda is welling up with tears as he watches Izuku's fight. He says, I'm kind of a crybaby just like him, and when I see him fighting so hard, it makes me feel like I gotta take action too. This kind of thinks back to the fight against m Muscular, and when Deku was trying to get back into UA, and in the crowd, the person who was calling out for Deku not to come back. When the students from class 1A were trying to bring him into UA, he thinks back to his words. Say so he get to rest here for now, we get to go back to our old lives eventually. The man sees 
Deku's struggle. He remembers Deku's words. Everyone is in this together with me, so yes, we'll bring it all back. Yeah. It's a different thing to know that someone was out there struggling and to see how they're out there struggling. Ah, man. It looks like Monomo is beat up because he's on a stretcher being pulled by one of the... Is it one of the pussycats or is it someone else? As Manga Fushikadashi Fukudoshi is one of those. He's calling out, Monoma, hang in there. Meanwhile, Yayorozu is helping Kaminari, who's still kind of fried, and they're watching everything go down on Yayorozu's phone. Yayorozu says Midoriya has once more adopted that dark form of his as they watch him fighting. Kaminari starts to wince. He says, Momoya, in comics and stuff, they got characters who will be like, I believe in my pal, total faith. Usually it's some... Buddy on the sidelines who'd be shouting that, like me or Kirishima. Yagorosa says, I'm sorry to say I haven't consumed those particular works of fiction. Of course. Kaminari says, not much of a shonen reader, right? Well, Midoriya probably... Midoriya's probably like the strongest guy in the world now, so why don't I feel like everything's gonna turn out okay? The way All Might used to inspire everyone. And as Kaminari starts to well up with tears, he says, Momoya, does me being all anxious and worried mean I don't got faith in him? Uh, he feels guilty because he <laughs> is like, I'm just worried, man. I mean, but it's hard to have, like, relentless faith like that. Uh, looks like Tiger is with Froppy watching a helicopter take off. One of the news ladies from before seems to have taken the injured as Froppy watches with tears welling up in her eyes. One of the news ladies calls out, yeah, because we got a girl... Here, who's in seriously bad shape. Uh, Gravity something or other. I forgot her name. The girl from UA. Anyway, the traveler will get here. Get her there soon. The other news lady comes down in the chopper that she was in over to where Hawks and Tokiyami are. She goes rushing in saying, UA robots are on their way. That gravity girl might not pull through. Uh, hey, we got a live feed of Midoriya. It's looking crazy. Forget that. Focus on the folk. Hawks, who's <laughs> down and has <laughs> been through a lot. He thinks, Uravity, right, the one who, and he remembers Uravity's speech. If all of us, if all of us are even a little capable of seeing each other united as one, then you see the continued depiction of Izuku trying to get through the horde of fingers that Shigaraki keeps erecting to push Izuku away. Meanwhile, on top of the hospital, where Rock Lock is with Lady Nagant. Nagant says, Why did I follow after Midoriya? He managed to wrench open my heart. He has this special way of doing it, and there's nothing harder for a villain to bear th than that. Rock Lock says, I mean, sure. Beating villains is all about making them lose the will to keep fighting. Nagant says, I bet that's what he's up to right now. He's not merely out to punish evil. Like it's all so black and white. That boy's dream is to take him down a... This boy's dream is taking him down a thornier, more nuanced path. And that look on his face when he's up against the wall and running himself ragged. Makes you want to risk it all to back him up. Man, what a shot. So many people are just watching. And one in the crowd mutters, you can do it. And as Izuku continues to break through more and more, Shigaraki calls out. Get the hell away from me! But it's very similar to how his dad was trying to guard himself, saying stop Tenko. And as Izuku breaks through with his fist, he sees another memory of the house that Shigaraki grew up in. And Izuku remembers Shigaraki's words, saying the destruction of everything stemming from that house. Now do I think that Uraka is gonna die? No, absolutely not. We're at the part where it feels like things need to like are getting ready to hit their climax and it's for the most drama, but I don't think she's gonna die. Not after Toga tried her hardest to try to save her. To find out Toga's dead, that'd be, be kind of like, okay, I can kind of believe that, but at most, I think Toga just might not be as able-bodied as she was before. Like, a lot of the villains, because of the path they chose, I feel like their biggest punishment is mostly gonna be that a lot of them can't function the way that they used to. I mean, Mr. Compress is still alive when I thought he might have died, but it's like, no, he... But he can't live correctly now. Spinner won't be able to live correctly. If Dobby's still alive, he's not going to be able to live correctly. It's like, I feel like most people be like, oh, nobody died. I'm like, yeah, but these people lost a lot. There's characters that have lost limbs, don't have kidneys anymore, don't have limbs anymore, are 
damn near comatose like i don't know how spinner comes back from where he's at right now like i feel like even if shigaraki lives he's not gonna be functional very much like all for one like after his fight with all might he was brought back from the brink but think about it he had no face so i think they'll live they're just not gonna be living to the best of their ability which is about right all things considered a lot of that comes from injuries they inflicted upon themselves uh, it's also not like other characters haven't lost a lot i still I, shoot i still think about everything that miriko has lost like she's lost so many limbs midnight still dead <laughs> Midnight is still dead. I'm still wondering, we still haven't figured out the situation with Eraser and Present Mike though. That's the thing. Like with everything that's going on, I'm surprised we never dealt with that in full. And yeah, I wasn't sure how Eerie was going to get anywhere near Deku with everything that was going on. But a nice moment between Eerie and Koda. But I'm still wondering, what words could Izuku possibly say to Shigaraki to maybe get him to back down, or at least, at the very least, accept his law? I'm not sure, because that's the thing. What could you say to someone who's gone through what Shigaraki had? I mean, I don't accept him wanting to burn everything down, but I get it. Especially if you look at everything that's happened to him, I get it too. But I do love the belief that some have in him, and even Kaminari's feeling of, I mean, I'm still anxious, and he feels bad because like, do I just not have faith in him? Is that what it is? And it runs deeper than that. I feel like there's a deeper conversation to go on there. But hey, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I've been Deuce This Din, and I hope to see you later. Till then, bye bye. <laughs>